Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. President Trump sending troops down to the border, uh, the Mexican uh, U.S. border also. To, actually, it's at 26 different locations where the president is sending 5,200 troops on the border there, Texas, Arizona, and California, uh, bracing for a wave of migrants that are coming towards our border right now. And, you know, listen, guys, I've been a, a very pro advocate for not separating uh, families, but this is not really the case what we're dealing with here. Now, I realize that there will be some families coming, uh, and but at the same time, one thing that I've seen in some of those earlier reports, though, is that it is the majority of the people coming are males, men, men only. And... I cannot help but think this is going to be the same situation what we have seen in Europe. And, of course, we were there when this happened. Uh, the Syrian war was the beginning of the migrant situation. And, of course, you have to understand the whole destabilization by the United States, Saudi Arabia, uh, all these different uh, uh, destabilizations of Libya, Egypt, Syria, uh, causing all these wars that are going on over in the Middle East is what caused a massive migrant crisis. Of course, U.S. wasn't alone. They had help. They had uh, the French government. They had the British government. They had the German government. All of them involved in destabilizing, along with Saudi Arabia, the whole Middle East for whatever their big money gain is for this purpose. Now, uh, you know, the thing is, you reap what you sow. And... Western Europe, this is interesting, Western Europe, not Eastern Europe so much, mind you. I mean, the Czech Republic, uh, Poland, Hungary, uh, these places here, they don't have hardly any migrants in their country. So, you know, everything is still pretty peaceful over there. But Western Europe, the democracies there that, that are used to the uh, freedom like the United States, better way of living, etc., they're the ones dealing with massive crime, massive waves of people just living right there on the streets. Uh, and they're dealing with uh, a horrendous situation. Of course, as it is in the case of the United States right now, it was male only for the most part. There were some families that came. And I do have passion uh, and a, comp excuse me, a compassion for those Syrian families that were displaced as a result of the crimes and sins of NATO for destabilizing Syria in the first place. Uh, and, you know, there again, we're reaping what we sow for the crimes that these nations have done, allowed this to happen. And then what do you expect? I mean, even the Bible says when a man's hungry, he becomes desperate. And that's no excuse for the rapes and all the other evils that happen, but it happens anyway. Now we're facing the same thing on the U.S. border, and I'm hearing and seeing, according to reports that are coming out of uh, Mexico, these are mostly male migrants coming up, looking for a better way of life, a better job. Instead of $5 a day, maybe five, ten bucks an hour would be a heck of a lot better for them. But, and again, it's the same promise like in Europe. Come on up here. We have money, women, and everything for you, which was never the case. So who's the one behind the destabilization? Or is it you reap what you sow? U.S. allowed this to happen over leading the way in the fight against Syria and Libya and all the rest of these nations here. Uh, and is it coming to haunt us here in America? Or is this really just a plot? A plot to destroy nationalism, to cause us major issues in this country. Of course, there's a big difference between the United States and, of course, uh, that of Europe. Americans are heavily armed. So the crimes that would be committed against most Americans, uh, people will find out the Americans do fight back. Uh, so, But then again, that could be used for another, you know, disarming the nation, which I'm totally against. Uh, the Second Amendment needs to stay in power, needs to stay in place. So President Trump is sending the troops down to the border. How will they respond? Will the troops open fire on them when the people try to run across the border? Or will they try to physically hold their ground? What's going to be the case? What's going to happen? I'm very concerned, and I'm very concerned that it's a staged event. Who is staging it? Well, I don't know the answer to that. But I do know from...
things I've seen over the years and my own past here, I know a lot about what they do and what they're planning. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Pray for us. Headed up uh, wee hours of the morning there. My dad's feeling a little not so good and need to go up there and take care of him. He's getting up in years, getting closer to 80. And uh, so do pray for him. Pray for, uh, pray for us in, in our travels there as well. So we will be pretty much on a uh, simpler type of broadcast here for the next couple of days. But we'll be back here Wednesday uh, evening and uh, going into more depth with you guys. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Erev Tov.